Icarus flying, Icarus falling, lending our imagination wings, feathers aflame. In another age, poets meditated on Bruegel's canvas, marveled at the ship and took the falling boy for granted. They knew what he represented, that overreaching, ambitious son of the more timid Daedalus. It is a ship that drew their eyes in its wake. Such indifference seemed fitting. After all, what could be colder than a world that will not even acknowledge your presence? A world that holds the water flat as a mirror up to you as you rush towards it in a final fall. Only you shatter and are destroyed, Icarus, not even your image. Once you are under, who can tell broken feather from foam? This other boy is not like you. His wings are already burdened with the fears of all these years. No wonder he lost height rapidly. What would he have needed to discard to climb beyond 50 floors to where the wind can be clearly heard? This boy is not like you. When he went up in flames, helicopters hovered in the streets were choked with people. They had their fists at their mouths, stopping whatever threatened to fly out. Everyone took wind. The air thrummed until you no longer knew who was flying and who was falling. Gravity deserted us, but our hearts were heavy. At last, when he fell, this other boy, we all came down to earth. We landed softly like ash, not disturbing the earth with our presence. We became invisible. That moment, all places were home to us. Skyscrapers, statues, walls, streets, bunkers, steps, even the past out of which we could have plucked you, Icarus, as you fell past our window. Cryogenic. Let's assume it's the man who waits for the woman to return. Let's assume it's been 20 years or 30. In all that time, through all upheavals and sorrows and who knows, perhaps a few joys, he holds himself ready for the moment when she will return. While she goes on adventures and becomes lined with life, or perhaps takes on large burdens on behalf of many people, he is perfect and cool. He is waiting for her. One day, triumphant, she returns, expecting to find many things change, but some things at least just as they were. As with Odysseus, she thinks she will know him by his old scars and learn about him by his new ones. But in the 20 or 30 years that he's been away, the world has left no mark on him. Nothing acquired, nothing changed. He is just as she had left him. Perfectly preserved, he knows nothing. What can he tell her about truth or reconciliation? Redacted poetry is a message in a bottle. You have one book with you. It is your lifeline because you are now in a place with no means of communication. There is only this book and your one chance of speaking to the world is through the words in it. So you compose your message in your head. You mark the words in the book and you carefully cut them out one by one, knowing all the while that for every word that you use out, others will be lost on the reverse. This is the opportunity cost of making your message. But you do it anyway because you must. At first your dispatches are voluble and profligate. Soon you ration your words. As the pages become cut out, the book speaks differently to you. It must now be a classic because every time you read it, it shows you something new. The end of the book does not come as it usually does when the last page is turned. 
It comes with what remains are the unusable words. Everyone has a different list of these, but because this is the book you have and this is your list, the words that remain include anneal and recombinant and grease. This is not to say that you do not love these words or you're not happy that someone, the author of the book for instance, found a use for them. Just that you can't imagine what you have to say that, that would include these and other such words. But you learn these words because after you have said all that you have to say, after you have used up all the other words, these are all that are left you. Until other words come from the outside, until they can be recycled, the words you don't want or need are your companions to what you hope is only a temporary silence.